In this video we're going to learn how to scrape content from a web page where some of the data is dynamically loaded by a JavaScript. And this is very common nowadays when a lot of websites are single page applications such as a React or Vue.js application. And these apps perform an initial page load and then send further requests to get other content from the back ends. So the problem is when we're building a web scraper, the information that we want to scrape is not always available from the data or the HTML that's coming back from that initial initial page load. Instead, that data might be rendered by JavaScript and then put on the page after the initial page load. And that process is going to require a different way of scraping than simply using a tool like Requests and Beautiful Soup. So in this video, we're going to dive into a tool called Requests HTML, which is another package in Python that you can use to help scrape dynamic content from websites. So let's get started. Now I have open here a web page and you can see the URL at the top here. And this is a sample React application and it's built using React and deployed using Netlify. I'll leave a link to this page below the video but what we are going to do is we're going to try and scrape the books from this page and if we right click this content and inspect the element you can see that there is an article element in the HTML and that has a class name of book. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to try and scrape all of these books from the page but the problem that we're going to encounter is that these books are not loaded initially when the page first loads but they're actually loaded up by JavaScript by dynamic requests and that's done in this React application. So we're going to encounter that problem and we're going to see how to use requests HTML in order to solve that. Now what I'm going to do is go to VS Code here and I'm going to load up a Python script here and this script is currently empty. We're going to write some code in this video. So we now have a terminal at the bottom of VS Code and I've activated a virtual environment and in that environment we're going to install two libraries. Firstly the requests library that will allow us to send HTTP requests and I'm also going to install the beautiful soup 4 package and that allows us to find elements and data within an HTML response. So let's install these and once these have installed what we're going to do is at the top we're going to import the requests module and then we're going to create a link to the URL that we have in this web page at the top. So let's go back to VS Code and we're going to paste that in as the URL and what we're going to do is create a response object and we're going to send a get request to that URL and that's using the requests.get method. That sends a get request to an end point a URL on the web and the content will be returned and stored in that response object and what we can do is we can actually print out what we get back from that response by printing out the content property on the response object so if we now execute this script with the Python command and then the name of the script which I've called scrape dynamic we will then get the content output in the terminal below here now you can see the entirety of this content here there's not a lot of HTML in this response and we're going to see why that is if we go back to our page here and what I'm going to do is we're going to close the developer tools and I'm going to go to the page source and that's the pages HTML that's rendered when the page is first loaded and we can get that in the browser like this. Now if we look at what we have here and scroll to the right hand side of this you can see that we have a body tag and there's very little HTML in this body tag. We simply have a no script element which tells the user that they need JavaScript to run the app and the only other thing we have in the body is this empty div tag with an ID of root and this is a a common theme in a React or a Vue application. You have an empty root element and then JavaScript is executed to populate that root element with other data. So the problem we have is that if we want to find these books within the response, when the page first loads we do not have these article tags with the class name of book. Instead what we have is an empty div in the body. So we're going to encounter that problem now within our script if we go back to VS Code. Now let's make the terminal smaller here and we're going to see that if we try and find those articles using beautiful soup it's not going to work so let's first of all get rid of that print statement and at the top from the beautiful soup library we're going to import that object and what we can do is we can create a variable called soup here and we're going to instantiate a beautiful soup object and pass the response.content to that object and the second parameter to the beautiful soup object is the parser which we'll just use the HTML parser in our case. Now the beautiful soup object allows us to search the HTML for particular elements so what I'm going to do is create a print statement here and we're going to use the soup.findall function and we're going to try and find all of those article tags and we're going to specify that we only want article tags that have a class name of book and that matches what we've seen in the HTML response here. We have the article with the class of book 
So this code that we have here is going to try and find all of those and it's going to try and print them out to the terminal. So let's clear the terminal. I'm going to make it larger and re-execute this script. So when we execute the script, you can see that we get back an empty Python list. The soup.findall function has not found these articles on the web page. And of course, that's because they are not present in the initial response. They are loaded dynamically after that response by JavaScript. So what we're going to do here is install another library. It's called requests HTML. And this is like an extension of the normal requests library in Python. And one of the important things it provides is full JavaScript support. So we're going to see what that means in a second. But let's start by installing the package. So let's copy the name of the package. And we're going to go back to VS Code. And we're going to issue a pip install command. And we're going to install requests HTML into our environment. So once that's installed, we can clear the terminal and go back to the documentation. And this section here on tutorial and usage, you can see that what we do is we import an object called HTML session from this library. And then we instantiate that object here. And then we can use it to issue our get requests or other requests to different URLs on the web. So what we're going to do to begin with is copy the import statement into our script here. And we'll do that underneath the beautiful soup statement. And what we're going to do next is we're going to instantiate that object. So we'll create a variable called session and we're going to instantiate an HTML session object. Once we've done that, what we can do is we can change the mechanism that we're sending the get request with. Instead of using the requests module, we're going to use the session object that we've created and we'll then send the request using that object. Now at the moment, nothing has changed. We're just using this new library in the same way that we used requests. So if we execute the scrape dynamic script, we are still going to get an empty list back here. Now what we need to do is execute the JavaScript on the page to load up the books dynamically and that's the books that you see in this portion of the page here. So what we need to do is go back to the documentation and we're going to scroll down here and there's a section in this documentation about using this with JavaScript. And this is the section we're interested in. It will allow us to do just what we we're talking about. In this case, it shows how to grab some text that's rendered by JavaScript. And this is the method we need to look at here. The response object that we get back when we use the session.get function in this module, it has a property called HTML and that refers to an object that has a method called render and that effectively will execute the JavaScript on the page and it allows us to then search for items that have been dynamically loaded by that JavaScript. So as you can see at the bottom, we also have a note here that the first time that you run the render method, it's going to download Chromium into your home directory. And that will only happen that the first time you use that only happens once. But note that if you're using Linux, for example, you might have to install some packages to get that working. So what we're going to do is add that render call to our code. So if we go back to VS Code here, once we get the response here, I'm going to create another statement underneath that. And we're going to say response.html.render, basically calling that function and that will execute the JavaScript on the page. And I'm also going to comment out this beautiful soup code at the moment. And what we're going to actually print here is a couple of things. Firstly, I'm going to print the response.html. And that's an HTML object in this library that contains some information about the response. And that also has another property that's called HTML. And that will give us the full HTML for the page. So let's clear this out and we're going to rerun this script and hopefully that's going to work. You can see that it's starting the download of Chromium into the home directory. Always be aware that when you execute this render method, it is going to download Chromium. And once that finishes, we get back the HTML that has been printed out from the script. And you can see that we're getting much more HTML content than we initially got. And that's because there's more data on the page after this statement here has executed. And that's because anything that happens underneath that statement contains dynamically loaded data from the JavaScript. Now let's see exactly what we mean here. What we're going to do is we're going to try and fetch these articles again that contain the list of books on our page here. So let's go back to VS Code. And what I'm going to do is we're going to see that we can actually use a function called find on this HTML. So let's remove the HTML property here and we're going to use the find function that's available on this HTML object. And what we're going to try and find are all article tags that have a class name of book. So we can use this CSS selector syntax to get all article tags that have that class. And we're going to print those to the terminal and hopefully we're going to see some output here where we did not see it before. So the script is 
running and you can see we get back a list of element objects and that indicates that we are now actually able to find these articles within the response. And this also demonstrates another feature of the requests HTML package. Not only can we dynamically render JavaScript that's coming back from the page, but we can also find elements in the DOM using this dot find function. So it gives you some searching capability too. However, if you're more used to beautiful soup, what we can do is actually pass the HTML to a beautiful soup object. So what I'm going to do is uncomment this and what we're going to pass to the beautiful soup object is the raw HTML from the response and we can do that by accessing this HTML object and then accessing the HTML property that contains the text from the response. So I'm going to remove this code here and we can then reinstate this line at the bottom that contains the soup.findall function. Again we're trying to find all articles here that have a class name of book so let's clear that out and try and execute this. And we're now getting back a lot of information in a Python list for each book. We can now parse that HTML and extract whatever data we need from it. So for example, if we go back to the page, you can see that within the article containing the book, we have an H2 tag for the name of the book, in this case, a thousand brains. So what we're going to do is go back to the beautiful soup code here at the bottom. And after we found all the articles, we can chain another find call to that. And we're going to try and find the first H2 element that we get within each article. So the find function will return the first element that matches the selector, whereas the find all function will give you back a list of all of those elements on the page. So what we're going to do is clear this out and I'm going to execute this script and we're going to see if we get back a valid response here. And we're getting back an error that the result set object has no attribute find. So I'm actually going to change this up. I shouldn't have done that. What we're going to do is store the results in a variable called books here. So we get back all books from the page and that's stored in a Python list, which does not have a function called find. But what we can do is iterate over each of these books. So for book in books, we can then print out the book.find call. I'm going to find the h2 element for that book. So let's now see if that works and that we get back the book titles for each book. And you can see at the bottom here, we are getting back those H2 elements that contain the names of the book. If we want the raw text from the books rather than the H2 element, we can use the dot text property on that element tag. And then we can rerun the script and we're going to get back the book titles and not the H2 elements. So that's how we can scrape data coming from a dynamic page where the initial response does not contain the data we want to scrape, but we can use this library called requests HTML in order to render out any dynamically created content from JavaScript. And we can then search for elements in that response after the scripts have executed using either the requests HTML package itself, or we can pass the response to beautiful soup. We want to use their tools for finding data on a web page. So this technique can be very helpful in the modern web where we're often trying to get data from dynamically generated pages such as single page applications generated by things like React and Vue.js. This tool here called requests HTML can help us with this kind of content but for more complex actions for example if you clicked a button to load these up there are more complex tools such as Selenium that you can use in order to achieve this. If you're interested in seeing any content with tools like Selenium let me know in the comments but for now thank you for watching this video I hope you've enjoyed it and if you have please like and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the next video.